right? Frogs, nigga. Well, my wrist is his frog. Unfortunately, a lot of kids and some adults take these ignorant comments seriously. Look, there might be a cautionary lesson in LeBron for kids. This is what happens when you attempt to leave high school a year early to join the NBA. She went there with that. And it's always really unwise there, huh? to seek political advice from someone who gets paid a hundred million dollars a year to bounce a ball. Mm. Oh, and LeBron and Kevin. You're great players, but no one voted for you. Millions elected Trump to be their coach. So keep the political commentary to yourself. How many voted for her to anchor? someone once said, <laughs> shut up and dribble. We'll be right back. As someone said, shut up and dribble. <laughs> now, now, did someone else say that? Was she just kind of just pulling that out of, out of the... I mean, you know, maybe back in the day when... Yeah, but but she let it general, like yeah. someone said. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Or like we used to say back in the day. I think that's what she really meant to say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So maybe she's trying to dog dog whistle that one. Um, yeah, I had to catch a reaction though, brother Small. Okay, thought, okay. Oh, so you had, you had to roll it. Yeah, well, yeah good. I had okay. to roll it. I had to catch the, the live it. reaction. Oh, and oh no, that's fine. That's fine, friend. Thanks. Um. Okay. Now, Brother Smalls, you already know, uh -huh. back at it again. Um, I had to start off with that, you know what I'm saying? Um, just to kind of give a little climate to where we're where we going right now. Uh, the athletes are speaking up, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? President Bush is still making outrageous comments. And, I mean, I keep, I keep calling Bush and Trump. Uh, I've been, I've, I've been, I even wrote down Bush earlier really? okay. looking up for the video. But um, President Trump, you know... Uh, He's still saying outrageous comments. Um, what's your thoughts on Laura Ingram, this Fox News reporter, you know, sounding like it's 1965 or, you know, 1950s? And, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What's your thoughts on, on her comments and uh, how she basically got the platform to just talk like that? And, you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> what is the show? You know, Fox, Fox Network in general. This, this is what they do and this is how they do it. veneer of of civility is just really seem they really just being very blatant with their level of contempt and disrespect that they may be in this instant aiming it you know at our brothers our athletes but if you really listen to it they're really speaking about what they think about black people and what our place is and they do have a specific place they have for the athletes but that's just across the board you know, they say, yo, black folks, you know, don't start feeling yourself. You know, we still have our same mindset that we had when we first encountered you folks. So when I think uh, situations like this, one time I'd say it's a wake-up call, but it really depends, you know, how many people are really still asleep that this is a wake-up call? This this is just more of the same, and, and that's why I'm still, I'm surprised that people are still surprised at the stuff that's coming out of, our president Donald Trump. It's 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 he's been really clear. I guess during the campaign, people had this maybe reality TV kind of dare in the headlights deal, thinking, "Oh, okay, this is fun," and it was eating their popcorn. But this man is fulfilling a lot of stuff he was saying during the campaign. So um, we need to stop being shocked by it, by by what talking heads on Fox will say, or or what a very you know, unpredictable, and many are, 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 are speculating as to, you know, how sound mentally, you know, this man is. Some of his, some of his uh, immediate reactions to things and his lack of diplomacy, lack of tact, lack of civility, all the basic things that, that a, a leader of a country would need to have to be taken seriously and respected. He just, he really seems to, to, be, to be lacking. But um, that's the current state of affairs. But yeah, it's 
you know, when, 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 because I was just looking at it, well, you got the reaction. Once you see it's Fox, I mean, is this very far from what Fox does? And, and, and they, they pick people to, to stir the pot, to constantly speak in inflammatory uh, matters. And even the dog whistle part was like, as someone said, and they're still not wanting to own it, want to cast it out. But really wanting to say it. Which is shut up and dribble. Right, right. Like, your purpose is to entertain us. I was probably going to say, boy, at the end. I mean, I guess you didn't want to go but so far. But, you know, many, many hold that, hold that feeling. And it's so interesting. I was looking on YouTube uh, today, and it was, they did, uh, there's, there's a brother doing an excellent three-part series uh, on Malcolm X. And it was just some of the details that, was coming up when the split between Malcolm X and Elijah Muhammad, when uh, Malcolm X was coming down to then Cassius Clay's training camp. And, you know, that's when he upset Liston mm -hmm. for, for, for the title. But there was a perspective that uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad held, and even the Nation of Islam held. Uh, Cassius Clay, later become Muhammad, going into really wasn't given a big shot. There wasn't a lot of people embracing him in, in, in the line, and maybe when this goes up, uh, members of the Nation of Islam are those who may have more accurate information than I, but I believe the position uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad held prior to Muhammad Ali was that his followers should not participate in sporting endeavors for that specific reason mm -hmm. that it was seen as this uh, particular uh, 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 servant type uh, not taking serious position or role that he didn't want his followers to take. He said, no, we, we are, we are the gods of the planet. No, we're not this man's, you know, toys to, to be put on different courts and, and fields while he sits, sits back and, and, uh, for his entertainment. But I guess with the success that Muhammad Ali had, and he had been, I believe, a follower of the, the belief system for about four or five years, even prior to winning the title. So that changed it. But that's an interesting position that no, we will not participate in in your sports. We will not be, you know, your little boys to run up and down courts while uh, we are treated less than. So uh, I don't know. So yeah, things 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 will change. I've been in LeBron's corner from day one. Have he's had he's had my respect just the way he carries himself as a husband, as a father. Uh, the way he deals with the kind of pressure and the the, the, the crap they're constantly coming at him with and, and, and all the attributes that I, I mentioned that I find our, our president lacking, LeBron has diplomacy, civility, poise, you know, thoughtfulness. He, he, he measures his response. He's not given to emotion. So it's so interesting. We got a diplomat in, in office that doesn't, uh, exhibit that, but we have a quote athlete that now every, not every, but these folks with Fox are trying to belittle what their uh, uh, intellectual contribution could be to this discourse. No, just set up and dribble. You know, it's, it's deep, it's deep. But again, the varnish is, is wearing off and these people are just starting to show what some of their true feelings are. Again, that just really hasn't changed. What's your thoughts on, um, you know, athletes, um, you know, taking that risk, you know what I'm saying? We've seen the thing with Colin Kaepernick, him losing his job, but LeBron James being the biggest athlete in the world right mm -hmm. now, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, all the kids want to be like LeBron James right, or things right. like that. Uh, with, with that, uh, what's your thoughts on him taking that risk, you know, signing a half a billion dollar deal with Nike and all these endorsements and all these things, you know? He, he even said it himself, like, yeah, I, could, I have all these, but somebody still spray painted the nigga on my house. You know what I'm saying? Mm, 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 mm. What's your thoughts on them taking that risk and even more athletes wanting to step out and speak on these things? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's easy from the sideline to say it's a beautiful thing, but it's it's. I came up in an era where I saw an athlete put it all out on the line, you know, and, and come on national television to say I will face machine gun fire, sunrise before I would turn my back on my beliefs. So I kind of got a taste of what a quote-unquote athlete that has strong enough convictions that despite a title, despite endorsements, despite 
you know, these promises of millions, and, and not, not even promises, his ability, mm -hmm. he's, just like LeBron, top, Muhammad Ali was the biggest thing that ever happened to boxer mm -hmm. when he was yanked, when they gave him an ultimatum. And, and he stood on principle. So, so in having a little glimpse of it, so it's, I'm seeing it again, and as much respect and appreciation I had for the stand uh, Muhammad Ali took, that is the same level of reverence that I hold for a brother LeBron. And, and, uh, it's, and, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm hoping he is, he's, he's garnering that level of support from us in our community and any fair-minded people on the planet. You know, just some of this stuff is just basic fairness. Yeah. At, at what point do you not give a people an opportunity to to secure their their self respect a, a, as human beings? If you're in a society that is slighting you or slighting your 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 place, you know, at at the table of humanity in so many ways, and this is what's done uh, to black people through many instances, the political arenas, the entertainment arenas, uh, and, and if we don't make a, a specific stand, I, I think those things that we've gained over these decades of struggle and over these centuries, you know, we, our sojourn here is not a brief, brief thing. We have been here for, for a good, good minute, and, and uh, as the generations roll by, because, you know, that's, that's the thing that, that said, you know, you know, I never enslaved nobody. I, you know, that, that happened, you know, that was generations ago. Um, yeah, but the benefits of all of that activity that we are surrounded with are still being uh, uh, absorbed and taken and passed on to those mm -hmm. generations that will follow. So, so if, the, if the dynamic and the approaches and the tactics that have been used against us hasn't changed, Okay, in the generational chain, yeah, this is the grand and great grand of the same people that put this machination in place. So, at what point are we going to figure it out and mm. come up with uh, a concrete response? And not to take away from all the great men, like the Honorable Marcus Garvey, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Noble Drew Ali. I mean, the list is long of men that came with plans and had... Uh, various levels of success, even again back to the Honorable Marcus Garvey, a global mm -hmm. following. And this was back before all these media outlets, and had to have something in print in different parts of the planet that people uh, of Mela Nation, black folks speaking different languages, but all knew we were already grasping towards Pan Africanism. And this is over, well, oh, about a century. You know, nineteen to nineteen. So we're coming up to the century mark. Mm -hmm. When 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 Honorable Marcus Garvey was was stirring that pot of you know we are just as great as any other people on this planet, so all of this is is not new. But you know to answer your question, yeah, you know I, LeBron is a man for the times. He, mm -hmm. he he's risking it all. But then I think I think about a saying that's attributed to Bob Marley. You know Bob Marley, one of his great sayings. He said, you know he he once met people that were so poor. They were so poor that all they had was money. And when you let that settle in, so there are folks that they covet that so much and nothing could balance it. LeBron is clearly not of that ilk because he knows the true things that he's standing and risking it all for, money can't even buy that. Mm. And it's it's those those kinds of individuals come maybe once a generation, sometimes it even skips a generation, mm. and then you get one. And, and he's he's one of the ones for us to to enjoy and hopefully support.